All right, so just finished checking those sets uh, at the other big pond there and you know, paying, uh, being nice and talking to people, it really does pay dividends, right? So anyway, while I was talking about, uh, you know, talking to that farmer, he said, hey, my neighbor's also, neighbor down the road, a couple miles, uh, also has some issues with some muskrats. And, you know, we've had a lot of issues this year, and I think more than anything, it's because we had a, a pretty drought year, right? So uh, all the muskrats, they kind of had to come to the water, come to the ponds. And uh, so anyway, we're at this pond here. I just drove up and spoke with the farmer. Um, little pond here. And he says he... He says he only seen two of them. He says, I've only ever seen two, so there's not that many. Um, and I, I believe him, not a lot going on here. Uh, so anyway, I just walked all the way around this pond, decent size, probably two and a half acre pond. And uh, I was looking for the runs. And I come to this right here, and I'll just pan, but you guys can probably make out the run right there. So obviously this is this is why you don't want the muskrats in your pond. Uh, you can see the damage it, it's doing. They've already caved the bank back, oh, probably a good three or four feet there. And probably where I'm standing, you know, it's all tunneled out too. So definitely a, a hazard for gentleman there and his lawnmower and everything else. But you can see right there, there's a very distinct trail right there that's where a muskrat's going in and out he's got a tunnel going in just right there um, and then we come over here actually whenever I walked up here there was one that actually came out here and uh, I waited a little bit never did see him pop up so I'm saying they've got another den somewhere that's not quite as active um, I don't know but uh, you know this is the two that prominent ones that stand out I've walked around this pond you can see that nice mud line right there so uh, actually saw one pop out of there so anyway we're gonna set this up uh, set this up and we're this is this is kind of an extermination process here uh, we're not trying like how I do the beavers down in the creek and stuff where I try to leave some this is not that case uh, we're trying to get everything out of here eliminate them all uh, so anyway, what I'm going to do here today is instead of using the footholds where we had the actual feed beds at the other farmer's pond, um, here I'm just going to go ahead and use some conibears. So I've got uh, some 110s and some 160s in there, and I'm just going to find whatever fits that run best. Uh, and then I've got, these are my homemade stakeolizers there, uh, just a homemade deal. And we can just stick it down in the run. Um, now, unless that muskrat came back into the hole here since I've walked around and got traps, we're probably going to end up catching him coming back in. If not, we're going to get him going back out. But uh, like I said, he said we're only got two. Um, so these are the only two runs that stand out to me. So we're going to plug them both up and see what we get. All right, so this main run here, this main run's pretty good size. Uh, it, it actually fits a 160 just about perfect. And, uh, you know, a lot of times the 110s, if you can't get them super tight, you know, these muskrats are going to get, they're going to go around it. Um, you know, it just depends. Situational. That's why I kind of have both of them. Anyway, I got my little stakeolizer deal. Uh, pretty, it's pretty convenient in this situation, right? Uh, just got forks and I just slide that on, give it a little tension. And then, uh. Like I said, I'm not having a lot of tension. You can see it just fell off, but just holding that up. Uh, and then what I like to do is I like to take that ring and just put underneath it. And we'll, uh, we'll set that trap right down in there. That dude is gonna come swimming in, hauling butt, and uh, and he's gonna get caught right there. So we'll move over here and we'll see how big this run is. All right, so this is a lot smaller run right here. Um, a lot smaller run. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, and use a 110 in it. A 110 will will just fill this out perfect. Uh, like I said, it just kind of depends on the situation. You know, if you've got rats that's been in an area for a, for a good long time, a lot of times the runs will be a little bit bigger. Uh, these, I would say, within the last couple of months or so. All right, so just take that 110 there, 
Um, obviously, there's many ways to do this, but uh, just take that little stabilizer, put it in there. Same as before, I like to put that ring in there. Just, just to, I mean, it just kind of stakes it down a little bit. Uh, and then we will just push that down in the soft mud there. And, uh, yep, that dude's not going to know what hit him. That fits down in that run just absolutely perfect. So those are the two runs that I see. Um, we're going to look around just a little bit more. Those are definitely the two that, that stand out. So there you can see the mud's clear, and that 110 is just stuck right down in there. That's just a perfect set for it. And then, like I said, this bigger run over here uh, is that 160. Obviously, so you can just see just a stupid apparent trail. All right, so I looked around. You can actually see uh, the bank collapsed there right underneath my foot. Um, they just got it so dug out underneath this bank here. Uh, but anyway, there's the two sets. I didn't see anything else. All right, guys. So, boy, what a difference day makes, right? Uh, I was in a t-shirt yesterday and all bundled up today. But anyway, we're back at this one farm pond here that I uh, I set. I made those two sets with the conner bears in them, and I uh, walk up to it and uh, and look what we have here. I see fur floating in both of them, and check that out. That's a nice big mink. So that mink was going in there to try to get at that muskrat. Um, caught him going in so he actually was coming in probably dove in found that trail um nice big mink we'll pull him out in just a second and then we come over here there was actually a dang uh blue heron sitting here whenever i rolled up and you can see we got a muskrat and look what that heron did he started got out his nose there just a little bit uh that trap whenever it fired that muskrat floated up you could see that muskrat was going in into the house and uh and he floated up he was hauling too because he made it good ways through that 160 um but little damage there from the old heron they will do that uh obviously you know this is a 24-hour check but uh you know there's there's no big deal there um we'll be able just to board that and pin it but anyway we'll pull this stuff out of here all right so i just got out of the truck didn't even put my big boots on uh Walked out here, but yeah, let's pull this this 110 up here. There we go. A little mud on him. No big deal. Take that trap right off. Yeah, there we go. Nice mink. Nice mink. Like I said, perfect catch right behind the head. That mink, that mink knew that this stuff was there, obviously, and he was trying to dive in there and, and get at those muskrats. Um, so yeah, nice little bonus catch there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and take this trap and obviously reset it because the the farmer, the farmer, the farmer, ow, that hurt. The farmer had told me. I'm gonna do it again if I'm not careful. The farmer had told me. Uh, he saw two muskrats, right? So, anyway, we'll try to try to get both of those. So, obviously, we're just going to take this trap, put it right back on that stakeizer there, and we're just going to stick it just right back down, right in that hole. Some pretty tough mud. Pretty tough clay there, but yeah, there's a set remade there. Let's uh, let's come over here, bring you guys. Let's see where you at, right there. All right, so here's that muskrat in that 160. Pull him up too. You can see he was hauling. He was hauling whenever he made it in through there. Uh, made it a good ways through there, but we still got him. No big deal. Come on. All right. Perfect.
there's our muskrat little bitty guy you could tell this was a you know the muskrats i was catching out on that other farm it uh they was pretty good pretty good size this is a pretty small one so uh you know definitely that's what happened with this drought uh it pushed all these these new yearling muskrats out uh out into these ponds so anyway go ahead get that 160 we're gonna get it reset right back in the same hole here I don't know if these rats have another spot but uh you know I caught that one coming in into the hole so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna set that trap Set that trap right back in front of that hole, and uh, and we're good to go. So, anyway, that's awesome. Good catches here. Good catches. We got we got minks and we got rats. So there we go. Nice bonus mink there for us.